like I can see Gunner like up there getting emotional, like, damn, like my life was almost over. You know, like I cool, I understand that. But I if homie next to me starts crying, my nigga from Brooklyn, I'm gonna be like, yo, what's up with you? Like you look But that's not weird? all gunner fans. Huh? You gonna look at your your man's weird if he gets emotional at the show. At a gunner show? <laughs> if wow. my homeboy cries at a gunner show, we not friends no more. Yeah. But uh, well, you don't know the metaphor of drip too hard. It's no, no, no. Mm. Tears. You can't cry at a gunner oh show. No, warrior ma. No, 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 warrior ma. Two hundred episodes. Yeah. That new. Uh, 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 uh. Getting kind of old, Rory and Mo. Two mm. hundred. It's pretty old. Throw the fog in there. Let's hey. go. Look at us. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. We're doing it, huh? Yeah. It's Demaris queefing. It. Wow, that's fucking it's crazy. what? Damaris is queef. For those yeah. listening in audio right now, we have a fog machine, yeah. which I thought was just mauled hot box on the other side of the office. Yeah. But clearly not. And we have Moet with no sparklers, no sign. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're definitely not getting a tip, Miss Bottle Girl. Hey, yo. We gotta talk Jesus about Christ. we gotta talk about Damaris's weekend rendezvous for fashion week. I yeah. can't. Oh, so she was used to this. Oh my God. Y'all don't even know the things I heard about Baby D over the weekend. We'll get to that. People yeah. was hitting me like, yo, like you checked on Damaris. I was like, what's up? She all right? They're like, nah, she just outside. I was like, word. Damn, this smoke thick. Is that is that already a 200 episode memory? Yeah. Damaris at Fashion Week Demaris, yesterday. Damaris <laughs> takes Fashion Week. Sounds like a movie. I mean, that sounds like a good movie. It's Josh struggling. Yeah, they're like struggling to open. Because I'm not champagne. ill. I don't, I don't drink. If you're watching so on YouTube, Roy and Maul are, are struggling to open the bottles of champagne. <laughs> we look spooky. <laughs> I forgot. Like a, I forgot well, I there's still, it. there's a lot of fog, so hey. you might not be able to see it. See, I, I did that, that without spilling. I Rory, on Rory camera. That's, first, that's, yeah. per usual. Yeah. <laughs> the eight is still going. Yeah. Mom, he, he said I pop first. Exactly. Usual. Listen, yeah. he takes his time with the girls. You know? The older I've gotten, the harder it is to Mom last. doesn't want to take the helmet off. He likes yeah. to keep it on. But once he touches it. <laughs> oh. <Hey. laughs> All right. I've seen Maul pour up a, a few girls before. You know, put, he knows no what spill. he's doing with the You gotta put this video this on champagne. OnlyFans. No spill. That's we, the first time I ever popped a bottle of champagne in the All I got is Damaris' ass on camera. I know it's a little blasphemous that we didn't get Ace, but Ace is really fucking expensive. Yeah, why would we do that again? <laughs> in this economy? Yeah, yeah man. Inflation is kind of crazy. I can't, that was kind of crazy that, that we did that for 100. Bottle. Like, whose idea was that? What? For a bottle of Ace. Infla inflation hadn't hit the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Biden was fresh in office at that time. Yeah. So. Things didn't things didn't kind of hit the way they hit now. Yeah. But congrats to everyone here. Yeah. 200 fucking episodes. Congrats, guys. Uh, now, it's not including Patreon, live shows, other content, all that other shit. But yeah. this, this We've free- We've blown past 200. Yeah. <laughs> yeah these exactly. these free ass episodes. Yeah. 200, 200 of them. Woo! Cheers, my brother. 201 Cheers, if you guys. count Vimeo. Cheers to the that, staff. Cheers to the crew. Cheers to the team. Eddie, you've been there every step of the way. Yeah. Ooh. That is true. Steady, and Damaris. Yeah. Damaris was there for the uh yeah. every step of the okay, way. Okay, well, I've been there, just right. not on we camera. Just, All right. Jesus, come on, let us just get our flowers. Shut the fuck up. We nah, were just, but like Eddie, like he recorded like fuck. The first. No, I get it. Like, but I was I did all the socials. Julian was there in the beginning, I just was not there present. The jump. Yeah. I was he was on email. I was posting before <laughs> the shit started. He was, on the he, thread. he was CC'd. He was on the thread. Yeah. He was on the thread. So thank y'all. Yeah. Uh, Yom, thank you. Benner, thank you. Damaris is just pouring up a drink real quick. Um, Damaris has been pouring a lot of drinks this yeah, weekend. Let me tell you. I thought, I thought she is it was my over. birthday weekend. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you what Damaris has been doing for Fashion Week. The, uh, the I best think she was walking in the Jean Paul Gaultier show. I think she walked in that. <laughs> I think she walked. Can't pronounce that. Yeah, I think she, <laughs> she she walked in that. She walked in that. She walked in the Tommy Hill figure show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she was hanging out with Tezo. Is that his name? Tezo. Oh, I Tezo? was there. Tezo touchdown. Oh man, she's in the new Tezo. She's got a record coming with Tezo. For sure. They linked and she's built. She's definitely the rocker chick that was. Yeah, there with man. Tezo. She got a she got a record with yo, you know who I met that's a really cool dude? Uh Jaleel. I know Jaleel, yeah. That guy? Oh uh, yeah. I like, like Jaleel him. on the beat? Yeah. He's it's not Jaleel. <laughs> Jaleel on the beat. Uh, Jaleel, he's a cool dude, man. Okay. Cool dude. Where'd you guys meet? Uh, we went. I went to um, uh, whose party was it? Sean's. Yes, you did go to the Puff listening session. I went to. Well, it was. It, it started with Drake, and then uh, it started at Sadiq. Shout out to Sean Dickerson. Started at Darby. Great party. Ended up. At uh, one. ended up being Puff's uh, album listening, even though I didn't hear much of the album because I left. Mm. Um, Puff got there like two. I was like, all right, Jesus. I know what this is. This is going till five. I'm out of here. Yep. But um, the party was dope. A lot of cool people I saw in there. I saw a consequence. Okay, just finally saw Consequence. We Peace spoke. Oh yes, yeah, all love, man. Shout out to Cons, man. We spoke. Um, 
cool dude, and we just laughed about the whole situation. So. Gotcha. Well, shout, shout out to Cons. Um, but yeah, it was a good party. Shout out Sean. I usually don't hang out with Sean when he comes in New York, mm. and I know he started low key started feeling like I be mean, I don't fuck with him when he's here, but in That's LA true. I fuck with him all the time. So I made sure I went to Sean's party. Shout out to Sadiq. Still one of the best parties uh going right now. It was no different. Well, it was different in New York than it was in LA. There were certain people that was in there that I know wouldn't have been in LA. So, so I'm a slut for going out, but you went to Sadiq. No one yes. called you. It's you called went standards. to Sadiq. You went to one party. You went to one party. You went he to went to the party. No, no, no. You okay. went. You could have went if you wanted. Yeah. yeah you, you went, went to, to all the others. You went to all the other parties. I heard about you. Wow. People was calling me like your baby D outside. I'm Nobody like, what? I knew Jamaris was lit because Call she was you. texting me on like a Saturday I'm telling night. You, she texted, she called me and asked me about a restaurant. Like I said, mm. oh baby D outside. Yeah. I said she. She has time to kill between yo, events. Yeah, she going crazy. <laughs> He's going to a restaurant. Week. She was like, yo, what's the name of that spot? As soon as I told her the name of the restaurant, she's like, all right, cool, thank you, bye, and hung up. I was like, oh yeah, she moving around. I you know when they hang up like that, that means she got to go. I, I will was say, at Tatiana and I wanted to go to Crown Shy, so that's. what you was at Tatiana. You was fucking out. You was mixing. Jesus. She was everywhere. Blue Aren't you supposed to be sober? But cheers. <laughs> Raise your glasses, everyone. It felt like New York was back to New 200. York was back. Cheers to 200. Cheers to 200 more. Yeah, for sure. And 200 after that. You um, want to do 600 of these? <laughs> Yeah, man, fuck it. Let's go. They didn't think we would do one of these, so might, why not? Might as well. Mm -hmm. I, I love when Morgan is back. Into existence. Mm -hmm. no, I'm just saying, you know, mm -hmm. they thought me and Rory would be working at FedEx. Okay. Which, by the way, is a great paying job. Yeah. Oh, no, great paying really job. Really good benefits, actually. They thought we would crawl under a rock. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, yeah, they can't get rid of, rid of us that easy. Meanwhile, we with the rock, so it's like... I haven't had a drink. I haven't drank up. any alcohol. Well, I, no, wine. Off the first two sips, I still know why I hate champagne. It's a lot. It tastes like it was made in a boot. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. It definitely tastes like you're going to have a headache later, though. Yeah, I That's can't. why I, I, champagne is Champagne is the worst. But it doesn't taste that bad. But for 200 episodes, got to drink a little champickle. Yeah. Yeah. Champickle. Champagne will keep you from having hangovers, though. That's like my go-to. What? When I don't want to keep, when I don't wanna keep drinking liquor, I drink hangover. champagne. Man, where did, what? Champagne has, is the worst hangover ever. It yeah. feels like somebody has your head in a fucking vice grip. Yeah. In the boot that he's talking about. Yeah. In the boot. <laughs> double knot. Boot grip. Timbaland boot. Right I here. think it was because y'all was like mixing it with like Hennessy <laughs> and bad decisions. Who was drinking Hennessy with champagne? What type of animal do you think I am? <laughs> who, who, who would ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Irish. You know, y'all don't. Everything goes down the hatch. You know how y'all do. Um, I did bring gifts. I'm sorry I didn't get gifts for everyone. Um, but I did get some gifts for Maul. I did. To celebrate too. 200. One of your gifts Aww. was supposed to does he do? arrive today, but it didn't. Well, it did. watch. I didn't. I got very special wrapping, as you can see. Let's do one by one. One well, by one. Okay. I got, because we were in Rory's home and we were using up some of his stuff and I, I personally use like one of his good candles. I got you a really nice- <laughs> Laundry detergent? Candle from Diptyque. Oh, those are some of my favorite candles. I know oh. it is, brother. So I got you one for there and I have another gift on the way. Um, it didn't get here before I had to leave this morning. Oh, wow. Oh, well, I, can we I see mean, the candle? Can we see it? Like, what's I mean, the flavor? Is it an orange? Like, smell candle? it? Flavor? Are we going to give them give them a crazy <laughs> ad like this? Sure. Why not? It smells great. I almost kept it. Oh, yeah. This one is really good. Yeah. Yeah. This is one men and women would like. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, mine. Uh, damn. I didn't know you went above and beyond with Diptyque. <laughs> that's not a, that's, is that above and beyond? Um, well, it's kind of weird buying gifts for like your male friends. I have. You don't want to seem like it's like a, you know, romantic gift. I don't gift. think he thinks you're trying to fuck him, bro. Well, it's a candle. Oh, and it, it is a romantic kind of smelling candle. Yeah, yeah. Man. So makes you want to get naked as soon as you smell it. Since Maul doesn't like use his yeah. desk very often at the studio, he has it I got it him. Desk? I got him an accessory for the desk. Oh, wow! Oh. Just a nice little bobblehead oh. that can sit right there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a make Make America Great Again. Oh my Donnie God, Donnie bobblehead! Wow. How did, so he can no, agree Rory. with Donald Trump anytime Rory, he just moves his head. How like did this. you know I wanted this? <laughs> How did you fucking That's actually know? Hard. Oh my god, this is a this is the greatest one of the greatest gifts I've ever gotten. You gotta put life. it on the uh, let's put it up on the set. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just feel like we shouldn't. We yeah. Should not nah, monetize. He's staying. Donnie is not staying. That's for your desk. <laughs> you know, red cup. Red. Hat. No, I mean, this is on. my desk. YouTube's full of right wing rabbit hole people. They would love it. if they saw that in our pod. They'd probably tune in. No. Um, I know you're just getting furniture into your crib now and like getting situated. So I got you a toolkit, um, with the name Dan engraved in it. Dan, who the what? fuck what is Dan? Dan? I mean, it's the only one I could get. <laughs> <laughs> so Damn. figure Dan. Who the fuck is Dan? Dan is you. That's yours. Okay, fucking. Danny take boy. It. Does this have a knife on it? 
Yeah. All right, and cool. then I could walk around the streets of Harlem with this shit. Wow, while you're cooking up, more? I figured you could have a money bag in America. Yo, oh, wow. wow. It's crazy because, yeah. you know, you get coke oil on your, your clothes. It doesn't come out. So, wow. so I figured that would be. Rory just handed oh, Maul a money apron. New York money apron that's Weed green. Apron, yeah. This is fire. Yeah, and as the American yeah, flag. Wait, can you wear that now? <laughs> tackiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Let's go. You don't think it was designed well? Chinatown's finest right there. Oh, it fits perfect. Fits yeah. like, like a glove. Yeah. And you can put your Dan uh, pocket knife in, in the pocket. Oh, I see and, what you was doing. And I think Donnie's head paws could stay. Phone? Like right above the pocket. You can never have too many pockets. As a, as a man, you can never have you need so many different compartments. Styling mall. No, this is great. great. Fashion yeah. week over here. Oh, man. Wow. I don't know if I should cut hair or make eggs. <laughs> Cut <laughs> hair and make eggs. Like this, <laughs> both. This is like Leave a old, the hair on. This is like a multi-purpose type of like apron. Like you, you can do whatever you want in this. You can yeah. have, have sex. Like okay, you'd fuck in that apron. Oh yeah. No. Well, I would fuck her while she's wearing the apron. She would move oh. your apron to the side. Uh, no, I would. That's just, hey. Turn her around. <laughs> this is dope though. That's really nice of you. Money bags. Okay. Yeah. Lady mm-hmm. Liberty fire hydrants. You know, you from the block when you got a fire hydrant on your street. Yeah, you love America. Flags right there. Magic love America. Yo, four or five though. Y'all don't understand. This is great. Where I almost regret get it getting it. Put it. Put it like right up in the camera. Like get up in there. Yeah, where did you? I mean, they, they're pretty much sold everywhere. Are they? This is great, man. All but this now stuff. You got to is... give me another one when it uh, says uh, 47. Oh, my God. Does he become 47? I would. Has that ever happened with presidents? That would they missed be... a term and then they came back? And he would still be the 45th? I believe it's happened once before. Yeah, you're only known by the one that you. 47? No, be 45 it's, happened, it hap- it's happened once before. I don't want to, don't quote me. I forget which president. What's 45 plus 47? Wait, we're bad at math in this show. Remember? What if he's 4,457? <laughs> yeah, how does that work? So what? now if Donald, Trump, if Donald Trump wins next year, he would be the 40, because Joe Biden's the 46, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a governor. Uh, the fir- it was uh, Grover Cleveland. Oh, everyone knows that. Was the only president to leave the White House and then return for a second term four years later. And I, I believe he's only known as the numerical number that he was on the first. No, he's not. He was the 22nd and 24th president. Nice. Yeah, so he would Trump have to be because it's still a different term. And 47. Yeah. Appropriate, AK 47. Okay. Fucking so when it he becomes 47, I need to get 47 and put it right next I'll to I'll go that. to Canal Street where I got that from. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I know you. I, I'm watching all this. I'm Did like, you at checkout? Hundred percent. Give me the eyes, like at checkout. You know what's funny? When I was browsing, I saw that and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna get that." But I wanted to continue browsing, so I left it where it was. You went back. I for it, yeah, grabbed it real it. quick on. That's kind of on like the walk when a man goes shopping for like tampons. It's like you don't want people to see it on the checkout. Much rather would have heavy flow tampons than the Donald Trump uh, <laughs> bobblehead. <laughs> Even in Chinatown, because there's so much Trump shit, it's yeah. not that weird. I still no thanks. Well, thank you, man, for the uh, the bobblehead and the uh, the apron and the, um, the pocket knife. It's dangerous. These streets are like Gotham City now out there. But Shout no, out to I'm Mayor Adams. If you ever get into anything, I couldn't put Maul on it. That's like snitching. Yeah, it oh. is. So I was thinking, I see man. Mm. I see you was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You really from the street. Can you say it like that? So if and the cops pulled me over, I could be like, no, it's my coworker Dan. He left it at the office. Put on and Dan's I was jacket. Just, yeah. 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 Nice. It's like, no, my name is Maul, sir. I'm not, I don't know who Dan is. Dan, I work with Dan. <laughs> no, this is, this is amazing. Thank you for this, man. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Cheers to 200. Shout out to 200 more. Thank you to the fans for listening. Thank you to all of the supporters, Blood all of the people. Merch, uh, live shows. Comments, yeah. negative and positive. We really, really thank you. Oh, I love negative. It. This is great. And let's uh, let's get to fucking bongos. That's really what the streets want to hear. I wish I had this apron when I saw the video. My back shot sound like why? bongos. Let's just start here. Um, so Cardi B and Meg dropped a new song. Uh, obviously, they gave us the classic, uh, the legendary WAP a couple years ago, mm. and uh, now they're back for a different part of the female anatomy uh, called bongos. Yes. Um. I'll be honest, I had to watch the video four times before I even heard the song because I was just looking at <laughs> Cardi and Meg. They look amazing. Uh, first and foremost, the video is amazing. Video was shot incredible. Yeah. I don't um, know. Let's look up who directed it, but shout out to them. They smoked this. Yeah. Um, so we can start with love there. What does everyone think of the record? Meh. Meh. I'm not mad at the record. I'm not mad at it either. I'm not mad at it. It's not a bad record to me. It's it, not bad. I don't think it's uh, it's not 
I don't feel the way I felt when I heard WAP. It doesn't have the whoa, because WAP was such a like a damn, they talking crazy. I think that's the curse of this record too. Yeah. It's like now you, you have a comparison stick of a You gotta you gotta the cool. bar is WAP, obviously. Yeah. Like, okay, is this WAP? Right. But um I just wanna I, I mean they just look great. Uh, they do look the great. Record. Oh, just fuck okay. the record. Who cares about that? <clears throat> Megan looks amazing. She looks amazing. Cardi looks great. The video, the colors. The, I mean, fuck the record. What? I just was looking at ass. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I didn't. I didn't hear lyrics. I'm not this here to give you. Hit on mute. I'm not here to give you a rap genius <laughs> breakdown. I don't want to, you know, objectify women. I'm not doing that. But y'all knew what y'all was doing when y'all put this shit on Megan. This Cardi. video is not meant to be objectified, more. I'm sorry. It's I, to listen. Celebrate. Yeah. Women's bodies, but only amongst women. This they did this for women. It's a, yeah. It's a women empowerment. Yeah. Um. Well, I'll talk about the record. Of course, it's not WAP, but I think it's going to do its job. I think Cardi is in need of a record right now. And this one, I don't think is too bad. I don't know what people expected, I guess, is really my first analysis on this. What, what did you think they well, were about to do? Well, people, <laughs> I mean, like you said, it's the whole WAP thing. People were expecting it to be WAP 2.0, I guess. The undeniable shit that comes out the gate. This, I think this record can grow. When it first came out, I was like, oh, this is cool. I heard it more throughout the weekend and started to like it more. Yeah. And it's not going to go anywhere. This no, will yeah. we will be brainwashed with this. It will. I guarantee you, well. within two or three weeks, everyone will pretty much like this. I know WAP was undeniable out the gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This will be undeniable in a few weeks. That's not true. That, that's of, really how I think it'll be. A lot of people did not like WAP when it first came out. WAP got a Who? lot of criticism. A, a lot. WAP got a lot of criticism it when did. it first came out. It, it did. did. From Sean Hannity. No. Yeah, from WAP. No. From everybody. WAP it did. got a lot of criticism. It, did. it got, it it was got not criticism. Not Politically or because of, a, of what kind of because song of it was. the music. A lot of people did not like WAP. WAP yeah. was a grower. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Gosh, I, I, it definitely was. It. Rory's dick got hard. Oh, um, okay. Jesus I didn't know we were going to say that. You didn't need to explain. I don't know. How do you have that information? Well, no, it was implied. Just in case they didn't. Why are you implying on another man's dick? Fucking glass. I just came from court. I just had to like. I was. Which like, court did you come? Dick court? Like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? fuck? Which with court? Those, <laughs> with those glass pedal. Yeah. Court. <laughs> I brushed up on my. Yeah, uh, just with your pedal, uh, your pedal kit face on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's definitely the pedo Halloween costume. Yeah, like who is this guy? Who's the Who's the new guy on the block? Yeah. So people like, hated interviewing people hated the Boy Scouts. Uh, yes, no people one like, hated WAP. Okay, a lot of people didn't like WAP. Most more I, people I know, like I know, WAP. I know. Me particularly, I was like, yo, this is definitely one of the most vulgar songs in hip hop history. Mm. Easily, people was like, oh no, Little Kim. I said, no, Little Kim and them had crazy songs, but WAP was like right to it. Yeah. Like it was no, no metaphors, nothing. Well, it actually, was just like yo wet Wap ass pussy, and I was like, oh. Mm. Who doesn't like wet pussy? Okay, cool. But then when you heard it, he was like, damn, they talking crazy on this. Bongos is not as... Sexual. A, it's not as aggressive. It's very sexual. It's very it's sexual. sexual. Oh, it's sexual, it's but it's not, not as, as aggressive. It's not as sexual as WAP. It's not as aggressive. It's not as aggressive. It's not as like straightforward as WAP. My back shots sound like bongos. Yeah. Okay. We understand what they're saying. It's the not first, The first line is, eat my ass like a plum. This have you pussy ever tight like a nut. I have you ever, good plum. Like, better chew it up plums? like it's gum. Have you ever and wipe your mouth when it's done. Yeah. Have you ever eaten plums? I have eaten plums before. Julian had one last week. I you know exactly what Cardi's talking about. <laughs> Wait, so you? This is just as vulgar as WAP. No, it's not. It's not as. It's, it's still. It's still there, but it's not. Yo, WAP. She said, "I don't want to spit. I don't want to choke. Hit that little dangly thing. That swing hey. in the back of my throat. That was anatomy. That was. That exactly. was. Well, so was the plum <laughs> in the ass. It's, it's all anatomy. <laughs> Meg so was less vulgar, I guess, but Cardi was straight to the fucking point. When Meg said this ass shit like a stallion and that camera all angle, you, all you want to be, oh my little my ponies. God, <laughs> I could, I had to stop. I said, let me start this from the top because I think I missed the ball. Julian too. hates this song. Like I don't hate it. Yes, you do. Like, you were shitting on it, OD. No, so not, keep your I same energy you did that you had relax. off mic. I'm not you. I don't do the off mic and then. Okay, so you just came out here like, uh, it's okay. It's not. You that said great. it was a horrible song when I it's, walked in the studio. I didn't say it's horrible. I said it's mid. It's not a. You definitely said it was a horrible. Yes, he did. I think you. I think. I think it'll grow on you though. No, I'm saying, I look, I was at Atlantic when WAP came out, undeniable, hit out the gate. And obviously they gave that all the all the house money in the world to make it the moment that it was. They're going to do the same thing they did. I know that team. They're going to do the same thing they did on this one. Mm -hmm. Just because it's going to be in your face and be all over the place doesn't make it a good record. I'm arguing for the fact that it's not a good song. 
That's it. Okay. Will we see it everywhere? Will it break streaming records? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. They're going to push the, the video. Record. Incredible. Yeah. They look amazing. Yeah. I'm talking about the song. Just the music. It's not that great. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I, I wasn't like, when I first heard it, I wasn't blown away by it, but I was like, it's not a bad record, though. WAP, I loved immediately. That shit was incredible. Neither yeah. of these records were made for me, but I would play bongos personally before I'd play WAP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Your shit's dry? So, I mean, you know. I like bongos. I I am starting to like bongos more than I liked WAP, and I really, really, really liked WAP. I really like bongos. I think you're letting time. No, it's not time. It's not about that. It's I like the so fuck the lyrics. I like the music of this song better, right? Because WAP is a sample. Mm -hmm. It's that I sample mean, over and over. It's a catchy sample, but bongos is sort it's, of that it's too. definitely sampled. But it's like I don't know. It's just different. I really, really like it. It's like warmer. I would like this song Definitely even more. if Cardi even if Cardi and <laughs> Way more were on it I would yeah. like this song if that makes sense like even without their verses I would like the I beat think and bongos, the music of this song Bongos is too perfect and it's it also went, too, yeah. Yeah. And and it actually also goes up it needed club. it needed a Bruno feature if you ask me <laughs> that was the last time Cardi was really undeniable when she had those Bruno features yeah. but that's you know neither here nor there I don't want to yeah. get well, it goes up in the club. Even for people who don't know the song, it goes up in the club. Bongos? Multiple times over the weekend. Yes. Oh, I, mean, of course. I was great to say. Yeah. See, you was, and now that I think about it, I think that's what you were doing. You were actively, because we know you love Cardi, mm. and you know, I think that you were actively in them streets to make sure to feel the record, to yeah. see, see how people mm -hmm. were just living with it. QR codes. I'm definitely, yeah, I'm on her, yeah. I'm on her, She's street, yeah. I'm on her yeah. street team. I'm on her street team. Yeah, so sure. I think that's why you was hopping around Fashion Week, making sure the record was playing. She went to the barbershops. Yeah, I was she, like, okay, get your bongos. She was playing. handing out bongos. <laughs> yeah, the, the cover yeah. Art on them. Yeah, Yo, imagine her sitting courtside at the fashion show. What's courtside? For fashion shows, you know, uh, when they sit right on there, the side of the runway, yeah, front row? The runway, front row, yeah, front row. like with court bongos, side. just bang. Yeah. court side. I could definitely see Damaris with bongos court side at the, the Tommy Hilfiger show. My back shot show. sound like so. Pedro in the group chat, his back shot sound like bongos, and I said same. It was his birthday. So. Yeah, Pedro is like. <laughs> was that video of Peach with that hair? Was that real? Or did he? Yeah, like, that's, was that real? That was AI, did he AI CGI it? You never know with Peach. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had the question. I didn't even know Peach had that much hair. Yeah, he had the Donny cut. That was fake, right? He does have 45. I knew hair. that was fake. Oh, that was, was fake. Wrote, that was fake. How the no. fuck did he do oh, that? That's a letdown. Well, maybe that's what I'm bro, sure I, it's an old video. Oh, uh, because yeah. he grew it out in the pandemic. Well, yeah. put it in the corner of this YouTube video. So yes, can yeah. see. I'll put it. Bro, I looked at that and got uncomfortable. I was like, yo, dog, this has to be fake. That hair was illustrious. And it was I'm like, beautiful. Never, yeah, it was great. I was like, yo, I've never seen Peach with like such a beautiful it was the male, It was the male version <laughs> of, of birthday makeup. Yeah, then he like gave it a little like shake and then like looked at yeah. the camera and I was like... He looked majestic. It was like a Pantene the Kansas Jayhawk. Jayhawk. Oh, were you turned on? Like, no, I wasn't turned on. I was like, yo, is this a man Donnie or a woman right now? That's why I thought it was, was. CGI. I was like, like, he has long hair? No, but it was like the... You know, it like, did have volume, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it was like, is this a Pantene commercial? What is it? I actually heard Peach was one of the uh, people in the Polish blackface over the weekend as well. Now that yeah, I heard was that something too. totally different. That's what the haircut was for. I don't know. You had to get rid of it for blackface. Is that um, is that show in any way like canceled yet? Oh, it was also uh, Peach's birthday real quick, by the way. Just want to give him a quick shout out for that. Happy birthday, Peach. Happy birthday, PG. But yes. Um, so those that, that don't know, over the weekend in Poland, there's something that appears to be like American Idol meets America's karaoke. Got talent. It's fire. It's, yeah, their version of it. Guess the singer, mass Singer, what is it? I don't know what if they needed to guess. To bat, but black mass <laughs> That's crazy. So like, some, who's that under that black face? See how she's looking? She's like, who is that? I don't know who that is. So some clips surfaced. I believe the first one was the fake Kanye, mm -hmm. which was doing Stronger. Yeah. Uh, with the graduation glasses on. Wait, um, that actually kind of looks like Kanye. So when I first saw this clip, someone said, look, Kanye's back out in Poland. And in my head, that made sense. Yeah. Kanye would perform in Poland. Mm-hmm off graduation and dress like he did in 2007. Took the walk there. Then I started to look a little bit and I was like, that looks like blackface. <laughs> <laughs> you know from experience? Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it was eighth grade. Well, was, Kanye, the Kanye character, he does look like Kanye. It actually is good. Yeah, he looks like Kanye. Now, then as the, the, the Kendrick passed. The Kendrick guy, that is like, all right, who, who, who's behind this show? Which, which network is producing this? This show has to be canceled, I'm guessing. Probably. There's no way There's no way that this show can continue after. And is, is this something that they do every year? Or is this the first year? Like, I need more. What is happening to where now you can put blackface performers 
on television and have them perform. But you got to just go to an SEC it. school. In other countries, it's not <laughs> yeah. this year. The stigma, exactly. The stigma of blackface in Poland is not this. It doesn't have the same history as it does in America. Like it's to us, yeah. From the outside, it's fucked up. But to them, this is art. If I'm in America, it's enough and- art to put on a whole production and make it a show. They're not high. They're not doing this in private. They had a lot of time to get this is a televised there's like event. Tw- there's like 25 background dancers, all, all in perfect <laughs> choreography. And these guys did not miss a single English rhyme. No, you think they, they rehearsed were, in blackface. Oh, absolutely. You have, I think they were dedicated. Like how much polish? It's called the dress rehearsal. Yeah. yeah, you got to go all the way out. It has to be like a full out rehearsal. You just, like, throw, yeah. you just throw like these the under eyes on like yeah. you know, like a football game. Yeah, but like, listen, just put it under the eyes and go out there and do your your best Kendrick uh montage. I'm just upset the guy that played Drake. They didn't be. Like, Try to do like a last minute audible and be like, just be Khaled. He looked like blackface Khaled. And he abs- looked like Khaled tanning too much in Miami. Like he's been on the jet ski for way too long. Yeah, I, this is crazy, man. This is, this is, this, 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 I don't understand how this, like we can't do this in America. Well, I mean, to Julian's keep, point, yeah, it's drastically yeah. different. But this is American culture. These songs, these artists that they have portraying is like, this, Canadian. this is American culture. Also, I don't want to get too deep down the the music industry conspiracies, but this had to be cleared by all the major labels. Does oh, it? Shit. I didn't <laughs> to use what, to audio. use Hotline Bling to use the audio. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, all this was cleared. Wow. I'm not saying they watched. Uh, this may have been live. I'm not saying they watched it, but they definitely cleared. But does Universal have a division in Poland? Because it, then it would go through the local uh-huh. label. Yeah, like, you know for how sure. we have like you know. I don't know if there's a Universal Poland. There's definitely Universal probably. Sweden. I was going to say that they would probably go to their local, would be, which would be their offices, which would probably be in Sweden. Just, just some dude that was like, yeah. yeah. It's probably one of these guys. Yeah. He's <laughs> they, performing. They probably work at Universal. That's why they were able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the office like, I have an idea. D- this, is, this is disgusting, man. This is crazy. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm I can't believe that though. this is still. No, I'm surprised. That Even as the, he tried to do the half moon. You got the mannerisms done pretty well, though. No, they rehearsed. <laughs> they put time in. <laughs> they put time in with this shit. This isn't something that they just like was like, let's just do this and let's try it. This is something that they've been working on and waiting to debut to the world. Look at the judge with the serious face. He's like, hmm, yeah, that is Drake. That's that's what yeah. no one brought up. <laughs> every time they cut to the judges, how seriously intrigued they were about judging. They're watching every movement. Like it's a bunch of Simon Cowells that are really ready to make a proper judgment of how blackface hotline. Yes, I think works. you did the black. Now, listen, I know that we're in a time now with Nobody really gives a shit about anything. Uh, people are offended for 10 minutes and then they're on to the next thing to be offended about. But the fact that this is still something that is being produced and shot and aired on television in 2023 is, to me, just fucking insane. Like, no, no matter how you cut this, this is some racial sh- This is some racist shit. Different cultures. Yeah, but it's still racist. Racism is... It's not universal across the board. They don't, they never had A slavery. white person dressing up in blackface. Shut up, Julian. I'm saying Poland didn't enslave black people. It's I don't a care different who, history. I don't care who, who didn't enslave black people. How that's, is that a shut up, Julian? That's still offensive to black people. It's offensive to us because we're black in America. There's a no yeah, fucking so, black people in so, Poland. Yeah, but so no nobody in the world should be doing things that That's what, So we're saying the world universally has to respect America's laws around I'm saying racism. that the world has to respect- American arrogant shit. It's a very arrogant thing. They state. probably they don't, don't even know that. Black it people. No, they don't know the history the state, of blackface. The connotation means nothing to them. There is no- this is bad because of this. There, it, it's not that. This is well, we're doing this for the art then, form. Yeah, not even that's, America. And that's like whoever, because this is a huge production. This is television, a Polish production. So somebody in that Poland. works there needs to research it and see, like, could this be offensive? Could you know how be- much shit that we say? That's so arrogant. There's so much stuff that we say and do that we put out that we don't even think we're like, oh, if it doesn't offend me, then it doesn't offend anyone, and we put shit out. Look at like all these fucking major brands here that do. I, I'm struggling to think off the top of my head, but there's so many campaigns that go out that have ultimately get pulled back because of the cultural implication, because people don't think to look into it because mm-hmm. everyone assumes if it doesn't offend me, then it offends no one. Mm-hmm. That happens all the time. Yeah, but uh, we just saw Jamie Foxx almost get canceled after he almost died and we prayed for him for three weeks for saying something that was offensive when he wasn't trying to be offensive at all. That's another, you're kind of supporting my point. Didn't do whiteface in, uh, in Living Color. How am I supporting your point? <laughs> I'm just saying like the point, like that's, that is my point though. It's like people, people have different relations to things that happen 
because they're putting in, they're bringing in their biases and their past experience and their like historical con- context that fits their profile. So if someone says, yo, Jamie, that pisses me off it, because ABC, Jamie, but Jamie, from his point of view, his perspective is like, what? Like, what do you even, I don't even know what you're talking about. That's the point. Like people project their emotions onto situations half the time they have that they're not even involved with. Yeah. But the Jamie Foxx thing was, that's the, he, he, what he said, people tried to turn that into him meaning something that he did. Is that not this black face? This is? N- no. Cause to them, it look, it's, it must be a, this is a broad stroke of might be a false comparison. In this case, they're the Jamie Foxx in this situation. <laughs> I'm, it's a wild stretch, but th- in their mind, they didn't do anything harmful to their culture. This means nothing. It's harmless. It's theater. They're it's doing a, a live show. It's a costume show. To us, the outsiders, the Jennifer Aniston's in this situation, we're like, that's fucked up. You're offending me as okay, a black so, man in America. So, These so are me, white people in Poland. So let me ask you something. So you think that these same white people in Poland, if they had the same type of production and they brought some people out and it had them shackled looking like slaves, that they wouldn't think that that's offensive because that's not, that didn't happen. That's not Polish culture. They, like they don't, you think they don't know that that's offensive? Uh, slavery, that's I think, different. is more universal to the world than blackface. Yeah, is. blackface is, from my understanding, a very specific American thing. It is that happened in a time period. And right, it's an American thing that happened in an American time period, and we know that it's offensive and it's racist. This is American culture that they're performing. This is American music. These are American artists, black American artists. Kendrick is a black American artist. Kanye is a black American artist. You mean to tell me that somebody over there in this big production for this television show, yeah, I'm t- yes, somebody, somebody did. did not think that that would be yes, offensive? Yes, Maul, because we're watching multiple performances with lights, so, uh, do dancers, you think, do you a, think, a theater full of people. So, so, All right, so cool. Theater full of people, lights, cameras, action. You mean to tell me that nobody on that staff yes. over there not one single person yeah, would see that, yo, this Julian, may just dying on be the hill. offensive. I'm not dying on the hill. We're watching it happen. Obviously, no one shut it down. It's, okay, we're watching it happen. But that doesn't happen. mean that he's not asking Matter of fact, they did rehearsals and said, let's spray paint him black. Obviously, nobody shut it down because we're watching it right now. What Maul is telling you is, do you think nobody knew that this might be offensive and just said they just didn't I'm not fuck. saying that can't be true, but I'm also saying there have been things in the past where offensive things have been pushed through to go live. We've seen that happen all the time. Companies pulling back the fucking Gucci with the sweater with the black, the monkey face on it. Like the kids in the, the that sweater. H&M. Like we see shit like the H&M, whatever. We see shit like that all the time. They get pushed through the chains, the powers that be. They get approved. And then once you hit the matter of public opinion, now you're susceptible to everybody's emotional vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. Was and it then offensive? that's when people push back. I look, this isn't cool. Obviously, I'm not like they should do what they want. It's not to their code. Yeah, it's fucked up. But I can also see from their perspective, this means nothing to them other than an art and they're just doing theater. Or does it mean like they really just don't give a fuck? I don't I don't think they would do. Probably I don't both. think it's that. OK. Was it offensive when Channing Tatum dressed up like a woman and did Beyonce in a similar show to this one? Well, with the agenda that's going on now, no, that's actually progressive. I'm just curious. Or like Robert Downey Jr.'s blackface in Tropic Thunder. I thought that was fucking hilarious. He killed that character. Mm-hmm. People, he eventually had to come back when everyone started caring about black people. But he had to go out and, uh, and apologize for that role. Yeah, but, but at the time, it was a box office hit. Yeah, but the thing is, even in the movie, they knew what his character was trying to do and they were like actively addressing it like yo you're not black that kind of was the bit but that he was, was the doing it was a blackface bit it was yeah a black but face get, bit. it's never acceptable that's no the that's point. not no that's not he apologized years later yeah but it's it's a little different with that it's i know what you, i know the comparison you're trying to make face. but in tropic thunder what robert downey jr did was they knew what Obviously, they was, they was like, yo, this is, you're going to be blackface. Lady. It's always Sunny took a similar angle. They had an episode they had to erase from their history because one of the characters wasn't blackface. When the show became too popular, once again, when people started caring, they had to ultimately take the episode down like 15 years after it came out. Mm-hmm. It was on Hulu it was streaming. You could get it anywhere. And then they scrubbed it's still, it off the internet. It's still, it's still, you know, and, and I get it. It happens in Jimmy Kimmel, we blackface, see it. Charles yeah, we, Barkley. We, we, we see it. Silverman. We see it all the fucking time. Howard Stern. Yeah, like I like this is that's my point. We see it all the time. But 
the people know that every white girl on Facebook's they, high school photo they that that's offensive. Sorry. You're In saying, America, we know it's offensive, right? But you're saying that if these people know who Kanye is and Kendrick is and know their songs, I'm willing to bet that they know that blackface is offensive. That's all. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I don't so. even know if most of these people even speak English. And maybe just be singing along to fucking melodies and words that sound good. It's like BTS. Like those guys are just rehearsing English sounding records. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm not defending this. I think it's fucking dumb. But it's like I can also see from their side why it's a thing. Uh, well, or what if this isn't blackface and this is what black people in Poland look like? Yo, this is definitely not what black people in Poland like. I can, <laughs> I can, I can, no one, no one ever researched that. Have you guys been to Poland? I can. Promise have you been to Poland? No, I haven't. Have you? All right. Do you I know a Polish been, black guy? No. Okay. I don't know, man. After, All right. After Yachty took the walk there, they might have some black people there. <laughs> yeah, no. They if they do, they don't look like that. Is all I'm saying. Did it compare to the Gunner concert at at Barclays? <sighs> Who had a bigger impact? Of Hell of a segue. <laughs> Holy shit. He's also. Who had a bigger impact? <laughs> Listen, man, let me say something. Was, man, everyone's really was upset about snitching last that week. That was an amazing show. It looked, I mean, I just, of course, saw clips. Um, oh, yeah, you Talked to a few people. Yeah, that I was there. America was everywhere. Listen, man. How'd you I make have, it there, too? You were just at a restaurant? Just, you at the Barclays? I just told y'all. I got no, calls really all weekend. Nobody from Gunna? called you about Gunna. Demaris Ball. was outside. Nobody called you about Y'all not listening. I'm not just sitting here talking. Gunna had an amazing band. His band was so good. Before we get to that, let me... It's hard for me to sit here and not act like, you know, I got people in the federal system. I got family and friends that's locked up, serving time. So when you start talking about allegedly ratting and snitching those things, I feel a way because I know people who have been personally affected by people uh, cooperating mm -hmm. with the government, with um, the court system. Um, so we all know the the, the, the situation with Gunner. Is he canceled? Um, are we listening to his music? Did he uh, turn on his friends? Did he turn on YSL? Did he turn on Young Thug? Um, all of these things we've been talking about since the whole YSL case happened. And we spoke about it when Gunna uh, cooperated and said that, yes, YSL is a gang. and The whole yes, ma'am thing, right, when that happened. I'll be honest. I thought Gunna was finished after that. Mm -hmm. I thought there's no way that the culture is going to support him. Uh, there's no way that he will be outside and people will embrace him. I was one of those people. Mm. I thought it was drastically different from the whole uh, other guy's situation. Um, because I'm like, no, Gunn is one of ours. And we are not going to be cool with what he did. People are speculating if he talked to Young Thug and Young Thug was okay with him cooperating and was maybe who knows Gunner really didn't have anything to do with anything that was that the 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 government is saying YSL was a part of probably didn't. Um, but I'll be honest, it's hard for me every time I hear that record not to go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that you, shit is hard. It is hard. Yeah, like I can't. It, it's like I feel whack because I'm like yo. Did he do bad? Like, I feel like he did bad. I feel like Gunner did bad. I'm going to be honest. But it's hard for me until I hear Young Thug say, yo, he's no good. I mean, I think he's going to continue to sell out venues and, and, and perform and give a great show. I'll be um, honest. I think if Young Thug came out around the time his album came out and or said on his album... Yeah, gun is no good. I still think this Barclays show sells the way it does, looks the way know. it does. I don't know. I think his I don't music know. moves the way it does. I don't know. I it's I don't know. Drastically, I think people. Hip hop I think, is. I think it would. I agree because it's like people. If people are on the fence now, still to this day, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, but they're still on the fence. I think if but look how Doug was to give an official matter. statement and say, "Yo, he ratted." Has he ever it's, inched towards that publicly? Pause if I need uh, to. But like, I don't, not no, like follow I don't think so. No. Bullshit. I don't think so. I don't. I, I, I don't. I've never. I haven't seen Thug speak on it. Obviously, he uh gonna put Free Jeffrey on the on the um Jeffrey on the monitors and wrapped his verse on one of the songs. Oh, like, um, um, Thugs. Do y'all? And this is where I want like just like common sense to come in. Do y'all really think that he would be doing that and be comfortable doing that? If there was static with him and Thug, that's a good point. Uh, Donna looks great. It could be a way. It could be a way to get ahead of it or clean I mean, it up. 
there could be, I'm sure there's a world because of the plea he took that him and Thug can't even speak to each other. And obviously jail calls are all recorded. If you try to do a three-way trick, everything. He's not talked to Thug. Of course, there's people in between that could say he fucks with you or doesn't fuck with you, but. I feel like he'd know. I'm, I'm sure he's left it pretty open-ended purposely. I think. Pretty young Thug. Like. Yeah, I mean. He I, said when he, he got out, the first picture was still YSL. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, he obviously still has love for Thug and. Gave him a shot. Has, him his, get, has his support. You know, he's supporting him. But that doesn't mean that he didn't cooperate and put Thug in a worse predicament than he was already in. That doesn't mean that he didn't do that. Now, whether Thug was like, yo, I understand. You really don't have nothing to do with it. You wasn't really out here, you know, like in the streets. You're just an artist. So, like, get yourself away from it as far as you uh, uh, get yourself as far away from it as you can. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a conversation they had. But still in all, it's like. It's still a cooperation level, though. That's bullshit. I'm sorry. It's not bullshit. bullshit. When, you, when you think about people that is going to possibly be in jail, because if I'm saying, nah, we not a gang, and then you say, nah, yeah, YSL is a gang. Yes, ma'am. It's like, whoa, fam, that wasn't my defense. I was saying we wasn't. What the fuck that got to do with me if all I do is make music? Yeah, but then if all you did was make music, then I don't, I don't even think Gunner was really facing anything serious. He was in the Rico, so you don't he really know. He was in the Rico. He could have went to jail for the rest of his life I understand for making that. music. I understand that. But what I'm saying is... Did he tell or did he cooperate to a level that Thug didn't know was going to happen? Or did they have a conversation? Did they like I need to know why? I need to hear Thug say, yo, he's no good. But why does that matter? What do you Are mean? You, why does that matter? Because if I am because if I make music and that's all I do, you can't reap the benefits of holding this flag. And having the whole when you're, shit. when you're advertising oh, 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 listen, your listen, flag, listen, listen, when you're advertising you your flag you and the music business. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. You can't reap the benefits, which is with the problem that they had with the other dude. You can't reap the benefits of repping something and having this image and having this protection and all of that. And then, you know, you're reaping the benefits of it. But then when things go sour, you try to like, oh, nah, I ain't got nothing to do with that. It's like it happens all the time. Yeah, of course it does, which is a problem. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, cool. We know it's selective politicking going on out here. People was hanging out with dudes that they know cooperated and acting like they don't know they cooperated. So I'm not, this doesn't surprise me. I didn't think that the support for Gunner would be what it is. I'm going to be honest. I did never thought I would see him at the Barclays that lit show after all of that shit going on. I never thought I would see that. Crazy. I thought Gunner would go somewhere, just lay low, chill, wait till the whole case shit was over. We would hear from Thug, like, you know, his stance on where he stands with, with, uh, with, with Gunner. I thought we would get all of that before we got Gunner on stage looking like a young Kanye West at fucking at the Barclays. I never saw this happening. And again, I understand selective politicking. It's, this is the music business. This isn't the streets. Even though people try to make the rules that's in the streets apply to business and, and music, it really doesn't. As much as you try to make it, it doesn't. But I do understand that if Gunner cooperated, if he cooperated, if he cooperated, because we don't know. We don't. Well, we know he said yes, man. We know he he took it. He took a deal. But I don't know if him and Thug had an agreement. I don't know that. We don't know that part. Well, you made a you made an interesting point when this first happened that I did agree with. I thought the fans were going to fuck with Gunna, but you were like, well, you got to think about the insulation of Atlanta and all those artists that fuck with each other. It could get weird there. Producers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agreed with you. I was like, yeah, that's probably a good point. Mm -hmm. I think we're now going to see all those artists that were quiet purposely start to fuck with him because all the fans are fucking with him. Mm -hmm. He did that album with no features at all. Yeah, He just did this Barclay shit. They, if Gunner would have failed, all those artists would be like, yo, he's a rat, can't fuck with him. Now that he's succeeded, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of those artists that have been oh, quiet yeah. now start being like, yo, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that, but that's selective politicking. Mm, that's, and that's, and that's, you know, that's what happens. That's what goes on. We see it all the time. I just hope Gunner peeped that behind the scenes. Because I'm oh, sure oh, he, he reached saw, out to a few artists that oh, yeah, he, did not reply. Again, does, that, does any of that change... If Thug comes out tomorrow and say, yo, he's no good. Does that change? Not, not, not based off fans. his success and how much the fans have fucked with him and how it didn't really have a step back yeah. in his career outside of time that he he's, lost. He's gotten 
B- bigger, Paul. bigger, if if not anything. He's, he's his first. This was fuck you, mean. Is his first uh, global top uh, Billboard 200 hit. Wow. It was number six. Casual fans fuck with him. The, the women fuck with him. Like it's gonna be hard to not fuck with Gunna if you're one of those artists that rely on other artists to get hot. Yeah. Well, we got to remember again at the end of the day too. You know, this that is the, this is the music. Insane. This is the music. People business. were crying. There were people in there crying. When I say crying, like crying, like we were at a Mariah Carey concert. Oh, I've Gunna? I've seen Gunna. I swear to God, it was because it was a really emotional. And I'm not a Gunna. Like that's not really my type of music. I just you know kind of went. Whoa. You were there for the set. Which song were they crying over? It was more. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know the fucking song names. But it was more. It was right before he put up the free Jeffrey thing. Jeffrey. And it was kind of like he did like a. a but they was probably crying because they like yo he gonna kill your ass. <laughs> <laughs> He put the up final like a show. This is the final tour. This is the final lap. <laughs> they cried to push and pee. <laughs> he they he put up like a mon- he took pee. a break and he put it when he was changing clothes or whatever and he put up like a montage of like the the everybody saying that like he was a rat and like just different oh, okay. shit. Wait, he put a montage of people calling him a rat and like you know was diff- it? just different shit of like <laughs> him in jail and phone calls and stuff like that and people got really emotional about it. Um, <laughs> About calling him a rat? No, but I can see a montage of you and J- to your fans of you with jail calls and like family shit. Yeah, I can see people yeah. tearing up. This because everybody, because list. deep down inside, it everybody ch- knows that Gunna is not no fucking gangster. He's a kid who wanted to be a rapper and that's what he is. And he ended up in a fucked up situation and almost lost the rest of his fucking life being involved with the wrong crew when he was just trying to be a rapper. I don't know how that can't make you emotional. That would make, I feel like if I was a fan, that would make me emotional. No, I could see Gunna crying. But I'm well, not was, gonna be crying in row eight. Like, well, he was changing into Daisy Dukes. Row eight. And, yeah, like I can see Gunner like up there getting emotional. Like, damn, like my life was almost over. You know, like I cool. I understand that. But I, if homie next to me starts crying, my nigga from Brooklyn, I'm gonna be like, yo, what's up with you? Like, you gonna look but that's not all Gunner fans. Huh? You gonna look at your your man's weird if he gets emotional at the show? At a Gunner show, <laughs> if wow. my homeboy cries at a Gunner show, we not friends no more. Yeah, but kind of. uh, well, you don't know the metaphor of drip too hard. It's no, 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 no. Tears. You can't cry to Gunner. Oh Gunner don't even have no songs that make you uh, cry. We're, while we're looking at the set list now, I can't think of one record. <laughs> Which song that get you there? make yeah, me cry? Get me there. That's what I'm saying. Oh, no. Like, turn you... your back. Ooh. Mm. How's that one go? <laughs> he possibly turned his back. <laughs> what are we talking about? No, there's the one on the, the album. I think it was turned. I have back. a soft spot for Gunner now after his show. So oh, dog. Really see, this is what y'all him. do. This is what y'all do, I man. Like y'all but dog. look at see, this. Did you not see the clips? I've been told. When was that. the last time you've seen any artist, period, put on, and this is me based off looking at the clips, a show like that? I've been told. Like, who did the set earliest. design? That was a fucking Kanye West show. That shit was crazy. Yeah, no, it looked great. Young Wanna. The, 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 the set looked great. The show looked great. He looked great. He looked great. He lost a lot working of Working out. Yeah, he looked great. I mean, I understand it, you know, but crying? <laughs> well, outside of you, you know, you not, you may or may not, it's on the jury's out, um, supporting him as far as, you know, him telling. The show itself was amazing. I'm going to be honest. If, His if they'll come out and crazy. say a Gunna did bad, I can't support Gunna. Okay. I can't. Only because, like I said, I have family and, and, and friends that have went through that type of shit, and I know what that does. Like, I can't support that. Not saying that Gunna's still not a dope artist. But you support not- the person in jail for all the shit that he's in jail for, right? That's who you support? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Listen, oh, what, what y'all do, what y'all crew do, like, that's y'all business. Like, I, I get it. But it's still like, when you do certain, when a man d- makes certain actions and he does certain things, it's like, I can't, mm. I can't side with that. Two things could be right. Like, nah, I don't fuck with what your man did. I'm not saying he was a stand-up citizen and he was a positive role model for the community, but I also don't support what you did either. But you'll listen to Thug's music, but won't listen to Gunner's music. I'm not saying I wouldn't listen to Gunner's music. I'm just saying I wouldn't be at his show. I'm not saying I would be, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I wouldn't be doing that. Like, not nah, you can't, bro. It's certain things that I just stand on that I just like, I can't support that. I can't support that type of person. Like, I can't do it. Mm. I can't support somebody that betrays their friends and turns their back on their friends and does grimy shit to their friends. I can't do it. But the murderers, for sure. Did the guy deserve it? I don't know. We, we talking about, listen, that's a whole nother, now you get into a whole nother part of a conversation. I just think we champion the wrong shit. In no, no, I'm not championing nothing. I'm just saying, you say, you support the murderer. Like, who did he kill? Was that a stand-up citizen he killed? Was that a role model? Was it was that he on the honor roll? Like I don't know who he killed. He's and, he on the a, honor roll. That's a part of the street shit. Like it's gonna be lives lost. But if y'all all in the same game, like you know what I'm saying? Like it's like okay, cool. That's what y'all was doing. Yeah, and to Maul's point there, like I could completely disagree if two guys go to murder somebody, and then one who fully participated in the murder was like, "Well, I can get out of jail." 
and let me just put it on him. I can't support that's, that. That's, but, a, that's, that's doubly not, fucked but up. That's not what. Well, we talking about Gunner. That's no, not I know. What, yeah. I, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just answering the question. I can't support any of it. I'm not saying I support any of it. I'm just saying, like, yo, I I can't I can't support somebody that turned their back on their friends. I can't do it. Personally, I don't really care more about uh, Thug's response to what Gunner did more than I care about fucking Ashton Kutcher and the chick from Family Guy <laughs> and their character letters for their man uh, Danny Masterson. From that 70s show, sentenced to 30 years to life for two rapes. And uh, for all those people that are big advocates of like, oh, I need to hear the whole thing. This wasn't like sexual assault. This wasn't, this was two forceful rapes. Like mm -hmm. this guy deserves to be buried under the fucking jail. Absolutely. Um, Ashton and uh, Mila. Meg, Meg from Family Guy <laughs> sent in character witness letters to the judge suggesting that they didn't know him as this. They know him as a pillar in the community and they spent so much time on set and he, please don't put him away because he has a family. What's this going to do to his kids? Yeah. All this bullshit that they thought no one would ever find out, which is typically how we've come to see this year that these character letters end up being. Well, first and foremost, when you write in a character letter, if you ever had to write a character letter, you absolutely know what the person is facing. You've never done my character letters for my parking tickets. And it bothers me to this day. You had to get character letters for parking <laughs> tickets? <laughs> get the boot off the car. Um, when you write character letters, yes, you're writing to the person that you know, um, trying to let the judge, you know, know like this person is this type of person, you know, this, whatever, whatever. And usually if it's a high profile person writing a letter, it just means a little more. It's like, okay, this person has people in different places that they know that can vouch for them, that they're a good person. And one of the things that I saw in the apology video that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis posted was, um, first of all, you can tell that this was scripted. They're, they're that, reading off. You can of tell that they were reading something. You can yeah. tell that you know this was like PR one on one. Like it looks like, like a bad hostage video. Yeah, um, they knew what the 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 Danny Masterson was facing. I don't know how anyone can write a character letter for somebody facing rape. I don't, I mean, if you're my best friend and you're facing a rape charge and you say, yo, listen, man, I need you to write this character letter for me for the judge and I'm a celebrity, I'm going to probably be like, yo, you know what? I love you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm praying for you. I pray that this is not true with what they're accusing you of, because again, you you can know somebody and not know them at the same time. Like Which, you, can, yeah, you can know somebody, but like, nah, he wouldn't 100%. do that, and you don't know what they're doing behind their closed doors. You don't know what they're doing when they're not with you, so you can never speak to that. You could be like, damn, that would shock me if it is true, and this person is a rapist, because I never got that you know type of energy from them. I never seen them really, you know, in an aggressive situation I never like this per the person that I know mm -hmm. is a good person but when you're a celebrity and you're writing a character letter for uh, a friend that's facing rape you have to know that there's going to be some backlash you or have to know that this, it's going to be seen there's going to be backlash there's going to be people that's like how can you write this character letter for this piece of shit um, and then if you're going to apologize it can't be scripted it can't be something like what they posted. That was just like, come on, this is, we know that your publicist wrote this and was like, say it like this, say this, like, just say, yo, listen, he was a friend of ours. Turns out he's a piece of shit. So yes, we did write character letters. I feel like shit that I wrote those letters and I'm, I'm sorry to the families or the victims. I'm sorry to the victims for writing a letter to seem like I was trying to say this person maybe didn't do this yeah. or wouldn't. But it's, it was after he was even convicted. So is there even a PR cleanup? And that's why, you know, this continues on. Oh, this, this year? This, this letter happened after he no. was... No, I would this assume... Was both, you do character letters, letters before sentencing. Yeah. They have been convicted for the crime and before sentencing, oh, yeah. the victim's family gets to go up and talk to the judge oh, yeah. and then there's character letters. There's no way you Which, write that letter. Side note, I think for certain crimes that people are convicted for, there should not be the ability to have character letters. If there is a minor assault and they've never committed any crime before, I do think it makes a lot of sense yeah. for the people around them to be like, yo, this is not his character. It was a bad situation. Not, understand that he's going to do time, but this is not who he is. Please don't go crazy. Mm -hmm. When you've raped two people, 
what character could you could someone say? Or, or character could they be speaking <laughs> speaking to? Like it doesn't matter at that point. Yeah, he like was yeah, he guy. was a, he was a blast and crafty on set. Yeah, what the fuck does that have to do with this? Right. Yeah, I, I just thought that it was um very very careless and dumb on Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis's part to to write a letter. I understand again that was at one point a really close friend of theirs. They worked together for years, uh -huh. um, but yes. but in this situation, you have to completely be like, fam, I'm not writing a letter for that. Then, I can't do that. I can't put my name on anything that's going to the courts on your behalf right now. I can't. Like we've said, this is the worst history of PR, I feel like, in the last five years across the board. What would make anyone listen to a PR person to sit them down to do this video? Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't need to address to the world because they are celebrities and sent in a letter about to their rapist friend. Right. <laughs> but this is what you came up with? Yeah. It's stupid. It, and, it's um, the I, dumbest thing I've, I've ever seen. What I need to know the PR process within that. It almost looked like they didn't even talk about it before. Both sat down and hadn't seen each other in 10 years and then just tried to read something. Yeah. While looking up at birds and shit. Yeah. It's, yeah. um again, you know, when, you, when you're talking about sexual assault, it for me personally, it would be very hard for me to write a letter on anybody's behalf when it comes to sexual assault. Like I'm just not. If you don't want to be my friend after this or whatever, I just don't. I'm not putting my name on anything going to the courts on your behalf if you're fighting a sexual assault case. I'm just not doing it. And to even start the PR video with with Meg going, we've spent our entire history, which I don't even understand what that means. Like how long have you been around? The entire history of the world, we've been defending victims. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you guys sang in a COVID video? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I did not know Ashton and her to be leading the victim train. And then, I, I you know, it's, it's you start looking deeper at the video, they, you know, look like they haven't gotten any sleep. <laughs> like, they've been up stressed about this. You know, no makeup, no, you know, just wrinkled shirt. And we sorry. And, you know, we're just we're feeling really bad about this. It's like, no, y'all are sorry that it got out that y'all wrote these letters. And not sorry about writing the letters. Y'all are doing this because now the public knows that you wrote these letters and sent them in, which is what people do. Again, it's selective politicking. Um, it happens all the time. And hopefully, you know, but Ashton doesn't but, write any more letters anytime soon. What did it do, though? Nothing. For them? This, this PR video to clean up quote unquote try to it, clean it up. does nothing but again it made people, it sound it worse. made it worse <laughs> it, it way it worse because at least at this point we didn't see the like the letters were never they were just on a list of celebrities yeah. and them being the names that they are were attacked as a couple in their status all whatever the case may be but then yeah putting yourself in front of a camera and exposing yeah but Julian, you're just you, more vulnerable for criticism but what you don't understand is again even this type of shit it's just for the moment people yeah. really don't give a fuck well, it's an ego thing. They want oh, 100%. to like so bad that 100%. they felt the need to address. There's like 12, 15 other and they're people just, and on they're, that list. And they're letters. in business with so many other people. Of course. So yeah. where they're trying to like, you know, it's safe face type of thing. But nobody, I hate to say it like that, and I don't want to sound insensitive, but at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. And nobody gives a fuck. Christina Ritchie, another actress, brought up an incredible point. She posted to her story pretty much saying like, you know, the people who are in these positions of sexual assaulters and, and rapists can be great to you. It doesn't mean they're not horrible to other people yeah, in their exactly. lives. Exactly. So, you know, it's people live double lives all the time. Which is why writing a letter on somebody's behalf that's facing sexual assault is yeah, crazy. To me. I, can't, I can't guarantee yeah, that, yo, right. when you left, when we yell cut on the, the fucking 70s show and you went home, I can't guarantee that you didn't fucking mm -hmm. meet a girl at a bar and fucking sexually assault her that night. I can't guarantee. Just because we shot a whole season of this, that 70s show together, I and can't I, vouch for that. And, and I think it's offensive that even in their PR video that they were like, well, we really advocate and hope all victims find peace. Like, that's a, that's a spit in the face yeah. to actual victims when you're writing a letter based off somebody that's victim, victimized people mm -hmm. in that regard. Like, you look I just, I really want to know what PR agent is probably making 400 grand a year between the two of them mm -hmm. that mocked that up. Yeah. Like, that's fucking crazy. Give yeah. me that salary and I'll say, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, fuck Danny Masterson. Uh, hope he fucking rots underneath the jail. And me, Lacunas, and Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, fuck them too.
Um, and fuck anybody that supports rapists, and uh, fuck anybody that rapes. I think those are the those are the that people that man. we need to we need to find a different punishment for pedophiles and rapists. We do. We need to send a clear clear cut message that those type of crimes have no place in society, and we're not going to waste money on trials. A bullet. Woo. We're not going to waste money. We're not going to waste money on having you housed and fed three meals a day. We're not going to do none of that. We're going to get you the fuck out of here. And even with, you know, there is prison justice, but, you know, they're they're trying their best with PC and everything. There should be some type of sentence that if you don't agree with death penalties, that there's a scheduled ass whooping (laughs) every day. I'm I'm really not trying to like troll or make jokes or anything. Your wake up is like, why would, why is that not a, a viable thing? I'm telling like you, a, a scheduled ass whooping every day. We just need to see a convicted pedophile, a convicted rapist, and put it on we, camera that we know is like, yo, he he molested these kids. He did it. We he, just need to see them on on television, like the eight o'clock news, ten o'clock news. Just show us y'all throwing them niggas to the lions. Show it to us. We need to see lions mauling them and ripping them apart live on air. Very and I guarantee yeah. you, any of these nasty motherfuckers that's running around here thinking about touching a kid or thinking about sexually assaulting somebody, they'll, they'll think again. Guarantee. You just have to see it. Like, oh, that's what would happen? A 24-hour cool. news channel that just goes from prison to prison. Yeah. And you can just watch them constantly get their ass America has the a, rich, a rich th- history of that. I think pedophiles would rethink it a little bit. Not all of them, of course. But if there was a, a mainstream channel that just constantly showed 24 hours out of the day, turn it on live in prison systems of just a constant beating, mm-hmm. I think uh, we would protect some kids. I think we see, we see a, a, a decline in sexual assault cases. I think we do. It's a very old playbook used by like the sundown towns. Yeah, like play the public. Lynch but even if you look at other places in the world, I when it think comes, there's to, some value in. <laughs> yeah, when you look at other places no, in I the mean, world, yeah, the tactic like it makes sense. It's like, yeah, d- this is what will happen if you do. It's a scare tactic. I believe in uh, the humanitarian shit, and everyone's a person. But they touch children and raped women. No, those so are those are not. Sorry that we, I want to throw the human yeah. aspect out of the window. No, 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 no. Fuck them. They don't get the human aspect. Those are animals. You know. So we feed them to animals. Yeah. But I really want to talk to a judge at some point in my life and ask them what character letters really do. I just, I don't get them. Yeah. I, I think in certain I, I, cases. It's a, it's a waste of time. I think in certain cases it may help. Uh, sexual assault, things like that. We don't need, well, I don't, we don't need to hear that this dude was, or this person was a, a good person on set at the fucking 70s show. We don't need to hear that. Fuck that. Victims, families, I understand, to be able to talk to the judge after they've been convicted what, yeah what, what could anyone say in nothing the there's nothing there's nothing you can say like, about it there's nothing there's, which is why I feel like the doing judge probably doesn't even, skims those and doesn't even read them no I mean cause like who would have to write one for it to matter like you, that's you, what I'm like, trying to get like, at like, it what, would, it, the, the way would be less about the, the words in the letter but more so the person that wrote the letter. Like it's about if, the person who wrote it. That's what I'm saying. Like if, that's what it is. you know, I can't come to mind, but like if Obama wrote you a letter, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, that's Obama. Mm. Yeah. But like your friend from a set that you did, well, not worked you on crack, TV not with. Crack case. Yeah. Probably not the best character. True. Speaking of music, BET Hip Hop Award nominations came in over the weekend. This is your favorite time of the year. It is. I, I enjoy the BET you have a, you Hip Hop Awards. You have a streak I, to, to live up to. Not necessarily. I want to start by saying I like the Hip Hop Awards because it's the only show that really just focuses on hip hop and categories that other award shows would never highlight. So mm-hmm. I always try to support the Hip Hop Awards the best I can. Now, you're saying I have a streak to keep up with. Off mic, you were talking about Lyricist of the Year. And if you remember last year, I got banned from the Barclays Center because I said Jack Harlow shouldn't be Lyricist of the Year. Now I think you should continue the streak and diss somebody where you won't be able to go to their show. Mm. Um, so let's run through 2023's Lyricist of the Year category. All right, so t- Lyricist of the Year category for this year's BT Hip Hop Awards. Uh, 21 Savage, Andre 3000. Love Andre 3000. Icon. He should not be there. He had no. one, one verse this year? One verse. Yep. He should not be there. On Killer Mike's album, it was cool verse. It was cool. Cool verse. It's Andre 3000. Never going to be a bad verse, but Lyricist of the Year based off of one verse? Absolutely not. That seems a little lazy to put him there. Uh, Burner Boy, Cardi B, Conway, 
Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, who won last year. Mm. Um, Which I think it's still crazy, and this I got in trouble last year. I think it's crazy that Kendrick is on it this year. If we're not basing it off his Mr. Morale yeah. album, he had one song with Keem. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, same way I said last year, Jay-Z shouldn't be on the list. Mm-hmm. Now, is it fair for 21 and Drake to be there because they had an album together? Like, is that fair? Yeah, I think they both. Why not? And I think 21 was rapping. Oh, I think I mean, 21 on this is, is totally fine. You had an issue with Burner Boy, whether you want to admit it on microphone or not. I don't think Burner Boy is a lyricist. Why not? No. Oh. I just don't think he's a lyricist. I think he makes great music, great songs, but I wouldn't say he's a lyricist. Not saying... Like, when you put him and Conway in the same, like, what are you talking about? Not to say he's all Afrobeats, but people in Afrobeats, it's a different type of lyricism. I still think you could put lyricist of the year with someone that is leading that genre in America. Is it hip hop? Yeah. I think Burner Boy takes a lot from hip hop the same way we take a lot from Afrobeats mm-hmm. and vice versa. I'm not mad at, at them trying to add him in there. Guy's going to hate me for this. I think Cardi B definitely belongs in there off the streets of uh, features she had. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. You know who's missing on here that I, I think is kind of blasphemous and very out of touch? Jack Harlow. Besides Jack Harlow, Central C and Dave. Separately, whatever, together, however you want to put it. That's who you think is missing? How could you not put off that EP when it comes to lyrics that Central C or Dave would not be on Lyricist of the Year at the BET? When you're Awards. giving someone that put one verse out a spot on this. And, and Burnable, you're doing international already. Dave and Central C is, is hip hop. Where's Nas at? I don't know if this made, if the last project made the time frame. Okay, where's Killer Mike at? The fact that Killer Mike is not on here is, is yes, absolutely insane. Literally so, insane. That's all I'm saying. But you got Burner Boy, you know what I'm saying? You got Cardi, you got... You don't think Cardi belongs there? Over Nas and, and, and Killer Mike? Not over them per se, but I would take off... You can't... I would take off Kendrick who only put out one verse or two verses technically before I take Cardi off who put out four or five guest features that were her rapping. <laughs> Yeah, but when with, you have with quotables with ev- Killer everything. Mike, Killer Mike arguably has the best hip hop album of the year. You're missing my point. I'm not saying Killer Mike does not belong on. Here. I'm not, I'm I wouldn't take Cardi B off to put Killer Mike on. I would Why take not? someone else off. Because Kendrick and Andre 3000 had one verse. Okay, take them off and put Killer Mike. Not mad at that, Nas. You don't think Nas deserves to be? If he didn't meet the uh, the timeline, then no. He's he's nominated for Impact Track of the Year with 30. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all, right. If 30 that's made it in the saying, timeline, man. I take everything I that's, said back. That's all I'm saying, dog. That's all I'm saying. Like, what are we talking about? Nah, it's like, how is he not up for lyricist of the year? I'm a little shocked that they didn't throw Lotto in there either. I'm very shocked they didn't throw Lotto in there. I thought that was going to be kind of full of women this year as far as lyricist of the year went. Yeah. Because the girls do actually rap way more than the guys now, <laughs> ironically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was shocked that she wasn't in there. But... I mean, I don't want to get into every single nomination. Lyricist of the year, you know, we have a streak going on of upsetting people for some weird reason when it comes to the based, Well, BT, based off of this category that y'all have put together, uh, the great minds over there at BT, um, I would have to go with Conway. Okay. I mean, I'm never going to say Conway is not. That's my vote for this year. Out of these that you have it, Drake, obviously, we know... Uh, Kendrick, I'm not sure again why well, off of one verse this year while he's there. Who do you think is going to win? Not who you know should win. Who do you think BT is going to give the award to? Uh, Because my vote is Cardi or Drake. I'm going to go Cardi or Drake as well. Uh, And if I they mean, don't give it to Drake. It's always easy to say you think Drake because Drake is Drake. But I'm going to, Drake aside, I would say they're going to either go 21 Savage or I'm trying to see who else was there. 21 Spoiler Savage rent. or no, 21 Savage or J. Cole. Okay. I, could, I mean, Cole did have some impactful verses. I do find it odd though. That's the one category they could lean in to try to get a different fan base. Like you can put 20, not that 21 is not someone that actually has lyrics, but you can put these guys 
in artist of the year. You can put them in album of the year. Why not leave that lyricist category to maybe get some of the underground fans or the nerdy hip hop guys to maybe want to watch it? Give the, them an incentive. Or the real lyricists? That's what. Well, yeah. <laughs> well that's what. Yeah. No, no, but don't, like, don't fill it with commercial artists. Like, it, it, it doesn't make yeah. much sense. I think it's cool that you put Burna Boy there because I think it's interesting because he does have lyrics, but you can put him in so many other categories. Why not try to use that one to bring a new audience in? Right. Because if you have all the guys that actually do do well with shows and sell eight hundred tickets per city, Dude, which yeah. adds the fuck up. Yeah. You could throw Boldy in there. Like you could throw. Uh, you could throw. Ran- other, you could throw other Ransom lyricists, in there. You there's other throw- lyricists that you can throw in there for sure. Without yeah, I think they should really make that category the way they tried to do with the ciphers before the ciphers got too big. Mm-hmm. Like you could really highlight people to bring a new audience in, yeah, and make that a thing. Well, hopefully they get it right. Um, they didn't get the nominations right, so it's hard to get the, the who you give the award to right. But is it dead for ciphers? Like, did they just take the greatest thing that we loved about this award show and got got rid of it? I, I just is that fully capped like going i think that a lot of people just kind of moved away from the cypher thing or they probably turned it people started turning it down because it just gets to a point like how many times y'all want me to prove that i could rap i liked it with the new people though to be honest yeah but some a lot of them names was like yeah we ain't want to you don't want to hear people you didn't really know about just rapping like that wasn't the the lore the the draw was like people that we know go crazy, we actually get to see them in a cypher. I like it trying to introduce us to new MCs and new rappers. I'm not mad at that, but the draw was really to be able to see people that you know get busy on songs and on records. Now, let's see them in the essence of hip-hop and put them in a cypher and let them and let them go. Yeah. That was, that's what it was. And now, I, I, obviously, it's not that anymore, but... Well, let me, let me ask you, if Burna Boy does win a BET award. Does that make him a world champion or just an American champion? Oh, he fucking. That would make him a BET champion. Fuck yourself. <laughs> I want that one. So, what if you get a BET award? Are you a world champion? We would have or to are ask you just an American. Well, let's ask Noah Lyles. It's all that. international here. No, no. We we would have to ask Noah Lyles that. Um, Noah Lyles came out weeks ago and had some things to say about. NBA teams crowning the NBA champions as world champions. You really bought into that fucking bullshit. Me? And now you're still buying into it. No, I I, I understood what he was saying. Uh, it's like, it's 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 correct. This is the NBA. This is cool. the National Basketball Association. So it was perfect timing because they had to whatever the fucking They had the FIBA is. games, uh, the world games. Yeah. Uh, FIBA, so, see what they did there? Sort the, of. The world games. Um, and... Noah Lyles had, you know, things to say like, what are y'all the, cha- what are y'all the champions of the, like... The United States, like, cool. But now we're at the World Games where you're actually competing against other countries. And and now the United States D team has Noah Lyles feeling himself. No, no, no. No, no, no. See, now, see, this is this is what y'all do when y'all are proven wrong. Y'all I mean, find a way. It's our best players. Uh, it, it, but it is because it's some uh, of the best players in the NBA. The NBA, the NBA is the greatest basketball league in the world, correct? Yeah, objectively. So, uh, is, it, is, the NBA the, is the NBA the greatest basketball league in the, in the world so much so that yeah, most yes. of the people on the international team okay. are also NBA okay. players okay so so with that being said they sent some of their best talent from the best basketball association in the world these are still some of the best players in the NBA whether you want to say it's and the they're best playing other of the best players in the NBA too yeah well I will cap this conversation immediately the all tournament team which is the guys that were the best from the entire tournament mm-hmm. all five to seven I believe I think it was seven were NBA players. There was not one person on the all tournament team that was not playing in the NBA. Yeah. That proved Noah Lyles wrong. That proved him wrong. The best players in this world championship thing that you can hold the, the medal and say from USA shit, all NBA players. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, but everybody that was the best in this tournament yeah, plays in the National Basketball League. Yes, because the NBA is the National the best basketball, league. basketball League in the world. So we you're the world that. champion. But the entire roster and Carl Anthony Towns is from New Jersey. He's not from the DR. The the entire roster <laughs> of these teams are not NBA players, though. Yeah, if they have one or two stars, and and some are like Jokic didn't play in this. Yes, he did. Jokic did not play in the. Oh, not Jokic. Sorry. Yeah, but you know where he does play. Yeah, but I'm just saying, there's there's still a lot of players. There's a lot of good <laughs> NBA players that did not play in this tournament. But that's not the that are from other countries. The point but is, the, the point best is players that played in it were in the NBA. 
Yes, but on other teams from other countries, their entire roster are not NBA players. They may have one or two players on their entire rosters that are in the NBA. Their entire roster, 1 through 12, are not NBA players. Okay, what's This is what I'm trying that, to though? get y'all to understand. But yes, what's they the may have that? one player on their team that's an NBA player. You know why they're not NBA? Because they're not good enough to play in the NBA. Yeah. That's not true, bro. What are you talking about? It's, it is true. There are a lot of players that are playing overseas that are better than a lot of players in the NBA. It's, that's not that's not how it goes all the time. Just because you're not in, in the NBA doesn't I understand mean. the politics of it, but a lot of the times the, these players want to come. They, the NBA is the premier league. It's the best league by far. It is. Right. But And so what I'm saying is because we say, oh, this is the D team. This is not the best. Yes, we know. Steph Curry, LeBron, Kevin Durant, those guys weren't on this team. Yes, yeah. we understand that. What I'm saying is those guys that were on the team that were representing the USA are still some of the best players in the world. That's all I'm saying. And they fared how they fared and matched up against other parts, other countries from other parts of the world. They lost. They got their ass kicked. NBA players. Yeah. But the entire roster is not that German team. That entire German team is not all NBA players. What are you talking about? Four Dennis of the Schroeder. Five starters are NBA players. Dennis Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder is not a top 10 point guard in the NBA, and he destroyed that team. He's an NBA player. That's yes. all we're getting. At. We're, we're just, they all we're play in the league. We're talking about what yes. country. We're talking so, about what league. So they you're play making for. my point. How They're is that? all okay. good players. Even that D team that y'all keep saying is a D team. Dennis Schroeder, if he wanted to play for the USA, would probably have been on that D team. And he wasn't. He played on his he birth country. He should have been. He cooked him. He played on his birth <laughs> country, Still NBA Germany. Player. The rest of his teammates weren't NBA players on that German team. Four and of the five ki- starters were NBA players. All right, man. Cool. You got That's it. It's true. As far as that NBA point, because, you know, I'm a girl. I don't know that much about sports. But just to clarify. Kitchen. So I play. If I play <laughs> 10 shoes. minutes. If I play 10 minutes in the championship game, right? I'm on the Nuggets. I play 10 minutes in the championship game. I'm not really a starter or whatever. Okay. If when we win, I'm still technically the uh, NBA champ, right? Because my team won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, by default. World yeah. So how do you not understand Noah saying that you don't just because you won and your team won that you're not the best player? You can't say that you're the best player in the world or you're the best team in the world. Okay. If, unless if, you're a starter or unless you're one of those. Okay. Most of the relay runners, because it takes four people to do yeah. a four by one. Mm-hmm. Most of them are not in the finals. Maybe one or two at most are typically in the finals of the 100 meters. They're not the fastest guys in the world. They are the fastest four in the United States. Mm-hmm. They're world champions. They're not individually like it would be the same thing in that regard. You're still a world champion, yet you're not even close to the fastest human being that was at the games that year. You're just the first leg of the championship relay team. But you can still say that you're part of the best. Year. So we're saying Bro. the same thing. The guy on the Nuggets that played 10 minutes is still a world champion. And that's kind of a separate point. Because he we're can't saying be a best world champion won. because he didn't play against the world. He played against the fucking New York Knicks. <laughs> who have the world there. What are you talking? Like, I don't understand how that's so hard for you to understand. You can't be named world champions when your league is an American league. It's that simple. And so, no lies, it wasn't like he was shitting on it. He was just saying, like, yo, we can't be arrogant and named NBA champions world champions. You okay, can't what do if, that. All right, what if we did a league of the best, not in the United States, the entire world is involved, mm-hmm. and we pick the best possible players, and then we mix them up in different teams, but it's still the whole world. It's still the whole world. We mix them up, put them in different teams, and do the world games. Is the team that wins the world champions? Wait, say that again? Let's say it's not just in America. Okay. It's not just in the, the continental United States plus Toronto. It's the FIBA tournament. And we just, no, but we just mix and match. We just take the best players in the world. He's the absolute best bir- players. Not by birth. Not country. by country, just the best okay. players in the entire world. Okay. Mix and match them, put them in random teams, call them whatever the fuck fucks, and this is against the other guys. Okay. So the NBA. And then whoever wins that is the world champion. But you can't, but, <laughs> but this is what you're not understanding. They're playing against other teams in the USA. They're not playing against teams from but other Rory's parts of the world. But point is, those players that are playing, yes, the, yes, the games. Let's, let's do the, the games in the every games country. The games are held in the let's United States. Let's do them in Antarctica. States. But the teams are handcrafted by the best players in the world. There's no, you need to be born in America to like play in this league. You're not just from Dakota. Fucking, yeah. sir, look at the, all these players that are playing. This is to the point. The top seven players from the tournament. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of the 
nine players listed here are all M- are NBA players not born in America. Mm-hmm. To Rory's point, mm-hmm. you don't need to be born in this country to play in that league. It's just the best players, period, playing it's the, the NBA. It's the best players in the world. Yes, okay, cool. Just That's- because they have an American fucking city that Nike sponsors on their shirt for fucking capitalistic reasons does not mean this is not the most the greatest league in nor the, the entire in, in, world. I don't, but, it's but also that's the not, most global. But that's not what Noah Lyles was saying. Though. It looks like soccer, soccer. He was just saying like, you he can't. Just happy you want to meddle and talking shit. <laughs> I mean, he's, I mean, been, pro- that, he's been proven that. right. Oh, I, I mean, he's been proven right. He's, well, he may right. have he may have poked the the bear because after this loss, it looks like the the goats of the league are looking to make a return next summer. Including LeBron, Curry, KD, AD, Tatum, and Draymond. Well, fuck Draymond, he's trash. But like the Saying people, Draymond that, Green is trash. Trash is crazy. crazy. And yeah, I don't we're not putting ball. him in that category. Let, let's relax. Come on, he's a fucking glorified role player. We're Which not. They doing would that. need, especially on that team. No, I get it. His role is valuable, but like, it's just I can't stand like the pedestal he gets put on. He's a he's a passer and a defender. All right, what do you think is going to happen if Curry, Durant? AD, oh, Jason Tatum, landslide. Draymond Green, <laughs> See, LeBron that, James, Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving, Devin Booker. Like, who, like how do we think that's going to fit? If we actually Great. put our real <laughs> talent out there, no listen, knock to the guys listen, that played. I like the movie Miracle listen, as well. But listen, like, y'all what happens named, when we give our a, team? Listen, y'all named some of the greatest players in the world just now. Some of the greatest players in the league. All right? American. Hall of Famers. All of these guys one day. All American. What I'm saying is this. We just saw... The Olympics that had the Redeem team. Was it the Redeem team? Yeah. One of them. No, the, with Kobe. The Redeem team. What, 2008? Yeah, that was the one they just did the documentary on, right? Yeah. yeah. They didn't just run through the competition. That, that final game was very close. We're not saying the guys can't play. So this is all I'm... And this is, this is just going to what I think Noah Lyles was saying. Even if y'all take the best in the NBA, the legends... The rest of the world has caught up as far as talent, as far as players, to where it's like, yo, it's not the landslide that we once thought it would be. The rest of the world is like, there's players coming from other parts of the world in the NBA. Luka Doncic. That's our point. Right, but what I'm saying is now when Luka goes to his the part of the world he's from and represents his country, the USA, even though y'all have some NBA champions on this team, no, 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 y'all are, y'all are gonna. It's not gonna be that easy to just beat that team from but the, Slovenia. No, you're, he's you're still take, an NBA you're, player. You're taking a different point of Noah Elias. We, what he was saying was, why are you guys the world champions when the NBA is not the world? Of course, we are not saying that if you take USA versus Spain, that Spain could not beat the USA. We're not saying that doesn't exist in the world. Mm -hmm. We're saying that the NBA is the best of the best, so we are more than comfortable calling them world champions when they win. Yeah, but... That is it. Noah Lyles did not say, hey, the USA could not not lose to another team. Y'all are missing it. Still, even though there's some great... USA has lost. They they had a a bronze medal at one point. Even though there are some great international players in the NBA, most of the players that are in the NBA are from America. And that's what Noah's saying. Like, you can't say world champions. Yes, yeah, there's some international players that are dominating the NBA right now. Cool. That doesn't mean that you can now name it the world championship, the uh, NBA trophy, the world championship, because there are other players from other parts of the world that are great in the NBA. No. Because it's still mostly American players in the league. Uh, currently, the NBA has 120 international players from representing 40 different countries. It's pretty global. Uh, it, it is a global game. That's still not a lot of fucking half the league. It's not like it's half the league is international. No. And that's the, all I think that's all Noah was saying was like, yo, just call it the NBA championship. That's it. There's that's 400, to say. 450 players in the NBA, by the way. So of 450, 120 aren't American born. And, aren't American born. Aren't. And do you think for the most part, of course, I'm sure there's a few exceptions that out of those 450, those are the top 450 players in the world. Out of the 450 NBA players, players. In the NBA, I'm sure there's exceptions where there's yeah. there's a, there's 10 to 15 that are yeah. playing overseas that yeah, maybe should be in the league and yeah, they've yeah, been discovered yeah. yet. Yeah, that's my point. That's yeah, but either way, those uh, are the best of the best. USA got embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dylan Brooks. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, Dylan Brooks is not one of the best players in the league. Kardashian curse, man. He absolutely. Oh, sorry, not he, Dylan Brooks. He I'm absolutely killed 
Team USA, and he's not one of the best players in the league. Good player, but not one of the best in the league. Yeah. Um, I think we have voicemails. Let's get the voicemails. You've got mail. Julian, did you now, because we had, we had some... Oh, my God. Questionable. Did, did you vet these? It's amazing that people get mad at me. I'm not the ones making Who the calls. Who got mad at you? No, no, no. Like the, not you. Oh. The, the Redditors. <laughs> I thought I was going to say, like, I didn't... He always picks the worst voice. I'm picking the ones you guys submit. The fuck you want me to do? <laughs> like, it's... I'm just playing. <laughs> you're not, I'm offering. You're not writing these things? Yeah, people are like, he picks the worst ones. I'm picking your audio. All right, well, give us, give us one now, and hopefully this is a good one. Um, this actually, yeah, we'll do we'll stay on music. What's good, Rory and Maul and everybody else? My name is Tim. And basically my question is, so I do what I'll consider hip-hop media around the area I'm in in Michigan. So that's Bay City. Saginaw, he sounds like a hip-hop area. media voice. And I want to preface this by saying I want all all, all the, the artists that I uh, am fan of, fans of and all the artists that are, that are around here that are trying to make it. I want all of them to eat. I want all of them to feed their families off of doing what they love and shit like that. But y'all know probably better than anybody that not everybody else is cut out for this shit. Not everybody is going to make it. You know what I mean? So my question is basically, how do you support these artists that you might be a fan of on, on a personal level? You might think them as a human being is cool, but their music might not be for you. How do you support these 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 artists? How do you support these rappers? Because I know plenty of people that are cool that, you know, on a personal level that I might kick it with, that I might smoke it with, smoke with. But I don't see myself sharing their music, listening to the music, really caring about their music, caring about their 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 tour dates or whatever they got, got going on musically. And I know y'all probably know a few people in the industry like that. So my question is, how do you support these people that you might be fans of personally? But you can't get down with their music. I appreciate your time. Keep rocking with the show. Well, if he's talking about an artist, I'm not going to say established per se, but has like a fan base and their music may not just be for you. Mm -hmm. You can still buy a T-shirt. You can still go to the show. Even if it's not for you, if that's your, your mans or someone you like as a human being, mm -hmm. you can still go to their show and support it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think he's referring to like your mans and them that is, has mixtapes and they're terrible. I think he's talking about artists that have a, a somewhat of a following yeah. and are doing this professionally it's, to some degree. It sounds like he's talking about fans that are on the come up uh, that he may know personally, obviously, um, but he doesn't want to seem like he doesn't support his uh, peers or his local artists. So I, I think a form of support that people don't look at as support is constructive criticism. I think that's a form of support. Like, yo, listen, I think that, you know, this song was cool. I didn't really like this one. Or I thought this project was good. I didn't like that one. Mm -hmm. I don't like this new sound. I don't like this new look that you you have going. I don't like, you know, you should maybe try this. Or, you know, I don't think you should work with that type of producer. Like, it's there's little things that you can show support if without trying to jeopardize or, you know, put your, I guess, taste or your fucking brand or whatever you want to call it because he's in hip hop media. So you don't want to support things that aren't dope because people be like, yo, you like a bunch of bullshit. But I think there's way to, ways to support in a, in a way where it's not like, Hey, I don't have to post your music, but I went to your studio session. I listened to the project before you put it out. Yeah. I gave you some words of advice some words of encouragement. Like, Hey, you should change this, this song. I didn't really like that one. Um, like you said, maybe a merch, a t-shirt or something, a hoodie, Whatever, just things like that where you can still support the artist, but just not maybe the part of the artist that you really don't like. Yeah. And not, yeah, to your point, not every form of support. The only form of support is in public facing. You right. can do things behind closed doors. Yeah. You yeah. can have dinners, go to the studio, like mm -hmm. have moments with someone that doesn't need to be shared on Instagram, tweeted about or posted on your, your media site. Introducing like, the artist maybe to a, a producer that you know, like, hey, yeah. I think y'all will work great Point him in the right direction. If you care that much, if he's genuinely a friend, right. point him in the right direction. Be like, hey, I think your sound would work with so-and-so. You mm -hmm. know, you don't have to like take the reins and be like this massive part of their career in that regard. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not everything needs to be like, yo, re retweet this. Like, yo, put this on your story. Here's a link to my tickets. You don't have to. And a great, a great that. form of support that a lot of people really don't. I won't say like, but they have a hard time accepting is honesty. I think honesty is a great form of support. I think that if somebody, especially when you, you know, they know what they're talking about, and you kind of like respect their opinion and their point of view on things, like. 
I think them being honest with with you and them like you know giving you that time of just real real conversation. I think that's a form of support. A lot of people don't like it because maybe they're not hearing what they want to hear. But I think as long as you deliver it in a way where it's like I'm not trying to just tear you down and crush your dreams and aspirations of being a great artist. But I think that there's a cer- certain things that you need to change. There's things that you need to, to fine tune and you're not quite ready for this yet. Um, I think those are those are great tools of support as well. It all depends on the person that you're talking to and if they're in a space of willing to accept that type of support. And you don't even need to go that far into honesty without just starting with this is what I like right now, this type of music. Yours isn't really my speed. And if you feel like growing your fan base or care about fans like me that like this other type of music, I'd be happy to help you and tell you what I would like and wouldn't like. Right. You don't even have to go in and critique. Like, yeah. Your music's not for me. This is what I like and list it. And if you want to grow into that world, I can help you out. And as always, you just say, yo, listen, that shit is trash. That as well. I'm not posting that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. If it is, yeah. If if it's trash, yeah. if you feel like it's trash, and listen, I can't. I'm not. I, I I've had to do that with, you know, friends and people that I know, and I'm just like, who name them? Dog, I can't. I can't post that. Rory's out. Me. I posted Rory's <laughs> right. out. I've, I've definitely posted Rory's out. But it's like <laughs> people that hate me, and I'm just like, that ain't really. That ain't it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to because if I post you and your shit is whack, you're just gonna have an influx of people telling you your shit is whack. Do you want that? Mm, influence. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you want a bunch of people just hitting you out of the blue like, yeah, that shit is trash. All right, one, one quick voicemail today. Happy 200. Thank you to everyone here. Thank you to the listeners again. It's been a, it's been a great 200. 200. It's kind of wild. You think we'll get to 2,000? Probably, yeah. Especially with Patreon. I don't think so. 2,000? So Why not? A lot of fucking episodes, man. Can you add that up quickly in your head how old we would be at 2,000? Uh, nice try. Yeah, <laughs> I Bro, appreciate the effort of you going. Uh, for two thousand episodes, was it a hundred? A little over a hundred a year? It would be like twenty. We'd be like twenty years older. So yeah, I would be sixty something. You would probably be just turning forty. Fifty eight. Oh, you tried it. <laughs> you tried it yeah. for sure. No, Mo and I, we have some years in between us. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> You, you know, if you really put in Patreon episodes there, I think, yeah, I'd be like 40 years old. Um, God, I hope not. But it's been a great 200. Um, also, not to like be a downer, we are recording this on 9-11, specifically to New Yorkers. You know, condolences. It was a fucking crazy day. One of the craziest days um, ever. Y'all, y'all were very young when that, when that happened. I was... It was 11, but fuck I will never I fucking up. forget every hour of that day. 11? Eleven years old, yeah. Wow, damn, I'm getting old. You getting old? Yeah, I'm getting old. You was at the club that night. You uh, uh, was that two two thousand? You don't remember two thousand one? No, I'm trying to figure out if I was in the club. No. Nah. Well, you're probably there because it was the Blueprint release day, so you were probably celebrating. That's true. Yeah, but I wasn't popping bottles and shit though. What were you like eighteen or something like that? I was mm, my twentieth birthday was. Would be the 26th. So I was 19 when it happened. Mm. I was 19 when it happened. Yeah. Well, Still remember it like yesterday. I was watching Good Day New York. And saw that the first plane had hit. And I was like, what the fuck? Jumped in the shower. <laughs> that was your reaction? That's so funny. You had I to think, get that dust off you? No, I think I had to. I had. I think I was working at the time. I had to get ready for work. Okay. So I was like, holy shit. Because that's at that point, I think people still thought it was like, Accident. Yeah, like just something that happened. And when I got out the shower, the second tower was, was on fire. And I was like, okay. And that's when it was like a plane hit it. Yeah, you take a long shower. Nobody had work after that. Like everything was like, I said I take long showers. That's sick. How late? Yeah, there was a significant was amount of time between in between the, the two. It was like no, 20 minutes, no. 30 minutes. No, it wasn't that. Wasn't it like eight minutes? Between the two towers? No, no, it was longer than eight minutes. Getting hit? Yeah. Research that just so we can get a gauge. Well, I didn't, I'm not saying when I got. Time. I'm not saying when I got out is when the plane hit. <laughs> I'm just saying when I got out. The that second, was like when the clock started. That was like your timer. No, when You're I got like, out, okay, go. the second the second yeah. tower was already on on fire. So yeah, but yeah, I remember that and then seeing fighter jets fly over the city. Mm-hmm. Crazy times for the world. Crazy crazy time for New York City. Um, prayers to anyone that you know was affected, lost loved ones that day. 
Um, this is always that time of the year where we're just reminded of a just a tragic, tragic moment in history. And, um, you know, of course, everybody now is because the world is such we've dug ourselves into such a conspiracy hole. The conspiracy theories are loud and, you know, more more prevalent than ever. But Which even in that timing for our new segment, once we know people are starting to fall off at the end, say the wildest shit you want to say now. About 9-11? Make it about 9-11. Who knows? I'm just saying, uh, couldn't find the black box, but found the passports of terror. Yeah, the unburned passports. I just don't know if we are able to find that. I don't know. Uh, a I lot was, of things that I was just like, eh. deep into the conspiracy theory of it and still am, but never believed the planes were CGI and it was a stereo system that made the noise of the planes no. across the city. If that one is true, which... I'm now thinking and there's some world where it could. I want to know, was it Bose? Was it Sony? What was the stereo system that had the whole city that loud? We should use that as an ad. And not only that, uh, I think two things can be true. Where, where was the base that day? Like, where'd they put the subwoofer? I think two things can be true. Well, multiple things can be true in conspiracies. I do think that planes hit the tower, but I also feel like the way those towers fell was demolition. Thousand percent. There were explosives in the building to set off a, a collapse to where it wouldn't topple over as much onto other buildings. So I think two things can be true. I think, you know, in conspiracies, you listen to other angles and other, you know, scenarios and you find like, okay, that may, that could be true. And this can also be true as well. So, but, um, you know, regardless of that, we do know that lives were lost and we do know that families and, and people were affected by this tragedy. So, you know, in honor of those, we say continue prayers Continue thoughts to those people that were lost. And, um, you know. Before we piss Eden off, where's everyone's thoughts on Flight 93 specifically? Is that the second plane? That's the one that went down that was supposed to be for the White House. At the Pentagon? No, not the one, not the missile that went to the Pentagon. The plane that crashed. Oh, in the field? Yeah. I never bought that, bro. Here's the thing. Never. And I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but when they saw it, they said that wreckage and stuff, I was like, oh, it was, it was that's not, like that's not enough plane wreckage of a 740, 57. Yeah, they just like tanked a Cessna and we're like, yeah, there's a plane wreckage. Yeah, I, I never brought into that. Here's where I'm actually like conflicted as a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist. I know the nephew of the pilot of Flight 93. He existed. He's a, a human being. They had the funeral. Like they're not conspiracy theorists. They're, they're real people. Mm -hmm. He was a, a guy. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm just like, well, where'd they put him? <laughs> like, if that flight yeah. didn't crash, where the fuck did it go? So that's where my tinfoil hat, I take off for a second. Like, okay, okay. I see the Flight 93 shit. These were make-believe people. It never mm -hmm. was a thing with all that evidence. But I'm like, I know, I know his nephew. Mm -hmm. Like, he was a pilot. Yeah. Where'd he go? If it was a conspiracy. Cuba. Yeah. It just sucks the lengths that I mean, historically, America is a horrible country, and it sucks the lengths that we go to to get the things that we seek value in Nephew was at that time of the year, oil, um, and still continues to be oil. But, I mean, America's done horrible things. This country's built on terrible things, what? atrocities, like every oh, beautiful yes. home, every we'll structure. Look at the it's bobblehead. Like, we put on this, like, uh, the pride veil. This country is horrible. You don't think that they would casually wipe out a shit ton of people to go to war and make billions of dollars and steal some more yeah. land? Like, you're insane. Uh, definitely. But let's wheel out a veteran every baseball game and throw a fucking hat on and clap. But, but not give him the proper health insurance. No, of course not. No, <laughs> watch him whittle small. away. Let's give him a beer at, yeah. at the stadium. Yeah, give him a Bud Light until they went trans rotten a brew yeah thank you for your service but anyway, I need some insulin man fuck this country a rotten a brew Rory uh, <laughs> happy 200 <laughs> at least right fuck it happy 200 to us thank you all for listening thank you all for uh, supporting us on this journey and uh, we'll talk to you soon be safe thank you for those people who sent me titties too and for lunch slid you titties sent me titties remember the end of our last episode oh my god they actually sent you titties mm hmm all they did was send me the word miracle. I got about, I'm not even exaggerating, maybe 500 DMs saying the word miracle because I said at the end of the episode, I'd give $10,000 to the first person that DMs me. Maul said uh, to me earlier before we started recording, he wants women to submit uh, feet pics with a money bag on their pinky toe and he'll Venmo you $500. I heard the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was ver that was actually verbatim. It's in his draft tweets. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, 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 at, <laughs> and at the end, he said, hold me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy 200. Peace. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Hold me to it. No, Wally and Mom.